Let's dive into our series. Um, we're jumping into a series called Banner. Here is where this idea comes from. When it, it, whenever you're a part of a movement, um, whenever you're a part of something bigger than yourselves, at some point along the line, that group of people say, we need to create a flag that we are going to fly that symbolizes who we are. And that just happens. Go throughout all history. Like, that just happens. There, there is a banner. There is something that says we need to fly something that says who we are. So there's a Hebrew term I want to introduce to you. Some of you already know I say introduce. But uh, it's called, it's a Hebrew term for God, Jehovah Nisi. This term means the Lord is our banner. And, and so basically, it uh, literally means that the Lord is the banner with which we march. And so when we're talking about following Jesus, and today, just a heads up, if you are not a follower of Jesus in this room, um, we are so thankful you're here. And, uh, and today, I'm, I'm going to spend a, a lot of my time talking to followers of Jesus and Christians because um, there's some things that I think we need to remind our hearts. And, uh, and so um, if you're here and you're not a follower of Jesus, a lot of stuff like you're off the hook. So just, you know, chill, lean back, relax. Um, but I do think this, I hope you'll lean in because I think a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about is the reason why you probably don't like Christians and want nothing to do with us as well. And so um, that's, this is what this term Jehovah Nisi is basically saying is that as followers of Jesus, we have a banner. And that banner is the Lord. It is the banner to which we fly. It is the, the banner to which we show our allegiance to. It is a banner to which everything else falls under. It's the banner of the Lord. Now, all throughout Scripture, we see this term, especially in the New Testament, see it 80 times, this, this term, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. As followers of Jesus, when we give our life to Jesus, we, we no longer belong to the kingdom of this world. We belong to a greater kingdom, a kingdom that has no end. And, and we see throughout Scripture, Paul does this a lot, and so even in Philippians 3.20, he says this, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord. Remember that word, Lord, Jesus Christ. So the next couple of weeks, here's what I want to do. I just want to take a page out of Paul's playbook, and I just want to remind us, if you are a follower of Jesus in this room, or you make a decision to follow Jesus, we have three people getting baptized today, so excited about that. Yeah, um, yeah. But what that actually means, what it actually means to follow Jesus means that we are a citizen of a new kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, which poses some tension for us. And it poses some tension for, for many of us because when we see this word kingdom, there's something that we all have in common or we all could agree with. In order to be a part of a kingdom, you have to reckon with if I am going to submit to the king. Right? And no matter what the king, no matter who the king is in whatever kingdom, if you want to be a part of that kingdom, you have to submit to the king. You have to. It's literally in the word. <laughs> like you can't, like it just, that's the way that it is. Now why does all this matter right now? Um, why does it matter that we remind ourselves who we are and the, the, banner we, we, the banner that we fly, the banner that we lean into, the banner that we honor is the banner of the Lord? Well, for many reasons. Because we forget it a lot. And there's a tension that lies because we are a part of a kingdom of heaven, but we live in a kingdom on earth. And there's a tension here where our decisions on earth impact our quality of life here. Like one coming up in a month, the election. Here's what I want you to know about politics in this church. We are not, the only name that we are going to lift up and the only party that we're going to lift up and the name we're going to lift up is the name of Jesus from stage, okay? Did you know that? And this is one of those, these mornings, y'all, you're going to have to listen to every word that I say <laughs> um, because I'm probably going to say some things that are going to tick some people off. And what I would tell you is if, this, if something I say creates tension in you today, I think tension is a great thing if it can be resolved. And so if something is said that creates tension, uh, let's have a conversation about it. Let's talk about it. This is a place where you can wrestle through those things. But, but, but I want you to know that that's true. Now, what, I'm, what I just said about politics, but what I'm also not saying about politics is that you shouldn't care about politics. I think that is part of us following Jesus and being a part. I think you should care about politics, but you just got to know that politics aren't king. Jesus is king, okay? 
That's a spoiler alert really for the whole morning. But anyways, so we're talking about this tension that, that comes in that we are a part of the kingdom of heaven. We live on the kingdom of earth. Everything that happens here affects us. But the core part of being a part of a kingdom, and specifically the kingdom of heaven, is do we submit to the king? All throughout scripture, in fact, over 700 times in the New Testament, the word king or Lord are used to talk about Jesus. And it's specifically that reason, because if someone is Lord over you, then the, the basic premise is that you obey what the king says. You obey what the Lord says. And so if we're following Jesus, what we say to anyone who wants to get baptized is I say, I want you to make sure that you know what you're getting yourself into. So today, here's what I want to do. I just want to walk us through what it looks like to not just know Jesus as Savior, as the one who saved you, but to know him as Lord. And a greater tension we have to wrestle with is can we even know Jesus and follow Jesus if we don't both follow him and know him as Savior and as Lord. So what does it actually mean to know Jesus as Lord? We're going to be in one passage today, Luke chapter 9. You can turn there. It's going to be on the screen. And here's some context for you. Jesus has been talking and teaching his disciples, and now he stops that, and he actually calls the entire crowd that's around. He calls this massive group of people, and he says, hey, lean in. I'm about to share something. So here's what he says. And he said to all, if anyone comes after me, would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits himself? So here's what Jesus says. He, he begins to tell them, hey, this is what it looks to actually follow me, to be a part of my kingdom, a kingdom that never ends. Here's what it looks like. And so he starts by saying, if anyone, well, who is anyone? It literally means all. I love this. And listen, please hear me. The gospel, the good news of Jesus, to be a part of the kingdom of heaven, the invitation is open to all. Okay? All. That is great news. There's not a certain choice group of people. Anyone, all, can follow Jesus. This is what he starts by saying. We need to understand this. But he says, if you are going to follow me, you got to know what that looks like. And so there's two massive thoughts here that we're going to talk about. First one is this that you would deny himself, and the next one is take up his cross. So let's talk about deny himself, and let's talk about what it is not. So what deny himself is at its core is not saying that I have these desires, and anytime I go after them, I have to stop and slap my hand and say, bad. Like, I love, I love double stuff Oreos. Anybody? My people. Uh-huh. What deny? myself what Jesus is talking about he's not saying every time I reach for the cookie jar I say no bad boy don't do that that is not denying myself now we can we can hear this and say well this is what this means that I I have to stop myself from doing anything ever bad or sinful now is that true that should be the goal but at the core of what this means it's not saying don't do bad things that's not what Jesus is saying he's not saying stop yourself from doing bad things first and foremost then we see this take up his cross. And so cross bearing uh, is perhaps even more misunderstood because we've heard the term before, well, we all have our cross to bear. And that could be anything from just, uh, just a, uh, anything from like a, a frustration over minor inconveniences to a truly difficult situation, like a temptation, a long-term sickness, or a difficult relationship. And so we use this term, we all have our cross to bear, like it's periodic. Like every once in a while, I'm going through something difficult, and now i got my cross to bear. That's not what this means. So we got to look at the actual words to see what Jesus is saying. So that first word, deny, literally means to disown or renounce. Now to give you some context scripturally of where this is used, um, when Jesus uh, is actually being taken to the cross, um, one of his disciples, Peter, is questioned, and at, someone asked him, hey, aren't you that guy that's with Jesus? Now, this would, this would mean for Jesus that he, or mean for Peter, that he would probably die because he's associated with Jesus. And this is what Peter says. He says, but he denied, same word here, denied, disowned, renounced, saying, woman, I do not know him. So what does what is, what is this word deny literally mean? It means an intentional disassociation from relationship with a particular person. So when Jesus says deny self, it is attention, intentionally disowning or stepping away from the relationship with yourself as primary. It's not don't do bad things. It's that I am disassociating myself 
from making myself the primary focus. He's not making a statement of whether you're bad or good. He's making a statement of who are you most, uh, most closely associated with. Deny himself. And then he says, take up his cross. So the crucifixion was reserved specifically for offenders who rebelled against authority. So to take up one's cross referred to the practice of forcing a condemned person to carry the cross beam to his execution site that he would be placed on to die. So this showed that although he had rebelled against authority, the condemned person was now so completely conquered that his last act in life would be to carry the instrument of his demise to the place of his death. So taking up their cross was a show of complete and utter submission. A call to bear one's cross as part of following Jesus then is a call to be submitted to Christ as the condemned criminal was submitted to his death. So when Jesus says he calls for self-denial and cross-bearing, he's claiming authority. Following Jesus means disowning self and giving allegiance to him instead. And it means giving him allegiance down to the very depths of our being. Basically saying, if we believe Jehovah Nisi, the Lord is our banner, then we also say that my life all of it is in complete allegiance to Jesus. And it doesn't say periodically when we feel like it or when we feel really bad because we did something wrong and now we really need Jesus or things are getting bad and we really need Jesus. No, no, no. What does he say? Daily. Guess what that word means in the Greek and the Hebrew? Daily means Daily. Nothing fancy, sorry. It literally means every day of our lives. Every day of our lives. I am making my allegiance to the Lord in everything. Now this sounds really cute, and it sounds, you know, maybe hard for some. But what Jesus is saying is self-denial is not a periodic practice, and we aren't occasionally called to pick up our cross, we are called to live an entire way of life that is different from the kingdom of this world. This, this passage calls us to beg and begs us to ask this question. Who is your primary allegiance to, Jesus or yourself? Like, this is real stuff. Like, this is, this is not like, I love Jesus. Yes, I do. I love Jesus. How about you? This is, I'm following Jesus. And Jesus demands my allegiance. And so who has your allegiance? You or God? Do your feelings have your allegiance? Or is it God? It sounds very theoretical, but Jesus' words are intended to make this incredibly crystal clear. There are no halfway measures in following Christ. It's all or nothing. So by definition, it's not a hobby that we do when we feel like it, but a total and complete allegiance to him in, the, in every corner of our life. So this is what it means not just to know Jesus as Savior, for him to save you, but to make him Lord of your life. It's a complete allegiance. I mean, it, it continues to go on and say it's not just you and I. Philippians 2, 9, Paul is writing to the church and he's saying, Therefore God has highly, also highly exalted him, him as Jesus, and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven, of those on earth, and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is not Savior, Lord. To the glory of God the Father. What does this tell us? Because it can sound good. You may have, If you grew up in church, you've read it before. People have told you before, hey, don't lie, don't steal, don't cuss. And don't take people that do, I mean, like, whatever. But what this really means is in the kingdom of heaven, everything bows to the banner of the Lord. Everything. Everything. I, I, so if we think about the banners that we hold high, if we think about the movements and the things that we hold dear to us, if we think about those things that we pledge, that we pledge our allegiance to, and don't Please don't start reading in, in, in between the lines of like, oh, it's flags, it's red, it's, is he blue, is he telling us who he's voting? No, we're not, no, these are just flags, okay? Let's talk about it. I never thought I had to talk about this as an actual banner. <laughs> but the way we communicate with each other, specifically on social media, 
Facebook. What this means is your Facebook post, if you are a follower of Jesus, practically it means that they bow to the banner of the Lord. What does this mean? Well, it, it basically means that when we say banner of the Lord, we talk about his rule his, and his way and his word. So everything that aligns in here, everything that is in here, that means that if, I, if I'm saying I'm a follower of Jesus, I'm going to bow to the banner of the Lord, that means I'm going to follow everything that he tells me in this book. So that means if he says to love others, which he does, <laughs> then if my post is going to hurt someone, guess what? That post bows to the banner of the Lord, and I just won't do it. It isn't worth it. When we talk about other things, your political candidate or your preference, you got to know <laughs> That a man or a woman is not going to save this nation in this world. There's only one, and his name is Jesus. And I'm not saying, we can talk about, someone came to us and said, can we have lunch and talk about politics? Absolutely, let's talk about politics. I'm not saying you shouldn't care about politics. I'm just saying that at the end of the day, political stance and my preference, it bows to the banner of the Lord. And so I line everything up to God's word and say, God, is this not what I feel or what I like or what benefits me? Does this line up with who you are? We think about sexuality, everything from same-sex relationships to gender reassignment to pornography to marriage. Should I be married? Should I not? Can I live with someone that I'm not married to and have sex with them when I'm not supposed to? Like, all those things. Well, God's word is clear. It says marriage between one man and one woman, and sex is is reserved for the marriage bed. And so we begin to think about all those things. Well, can I, I'm just looking at porn, and it doesn't affect my marriage at all. Actually, it does. Because what God says is if you've looked at someone with lust, you've already committed adultery. All, the, all of these things around sexuality. But God says this, and no matter what I feel or can get away with, no matter if, can I flirt with uh, another woman if they're not my spouse? This is just harmful. Or it's not harmful. It's not hurting anybody. No matter what it is, we say, okay, if I'm a follower of Jesus, I bow to the banner of the Lord. So my preference or my feelings around anything when it involves sexuality, it bows to what God says. We think about our family, our finances. We think about, well, you know what? Like, I really need to build something for myself here on this earth. You have no idea the peace of mind that I would have if I could just get this much or have this much. And so because of this, I'm going to work, 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 and I'm going to neglect my family in the process. Or or. Find, like, I know what God says about generosity, and I know what he says about everything that he gives me is not mine. It's actually his that I just manage. But I really want this. And even though if it's going to neglect the other things that he's called me to, I really need this. This idea of self-promotion, like I need to make much of myself here on earth. All of those things, all of those thoughts, all of those feelings, all of those desires, if you're a follower of Jesus then all of those things, they bow to the banner of the Lord. Welcome to church. <laughs> the biggest, one of the greatest fears are, are this, well, if, if I can't do what I feel, and I can't say what I want to, and I can express myself the way that I am, then I, and I've got to, I've got to, let all those things die, like I'm going to lose who I am. Like my dreams and my desires will be plundered. My personality will be erased. I'm going to deprive myself. But this is what Jesus says. He says, hey, when you actually adopt this, verse 24, whoever would save his life, whoever goes after those things and believes that those things are the banners they follow their lives around, whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. So what Jesus is saying is, no, this is, this is actually how you find yourself. This is how you find your identity in Jesus. This is how you find out who you were actually created to be as you allow and you put to death 
all of those things. You don't suppress them and you don't say, don't feel it, don't know, you don't do any of that stuff. Like, notice these things are still, they still exist. They still exist in some capacity. They just bow to the banner of the Lord, which means, God, whatever you want, I'm going to do. Like, my answer is yes, ahead of time in that. So here's, here's what he says. He says, this is how you find yourself. But the tension is that we live in a kingdom now that we can see and feel and affects our quality of life now. And so what happens is this, is we realize, you already feel this right now. This is difficult. Many of us don't want to do this. Why? Because it pushes against the comfort of our very fat, the fabric of our being. That says, seek self, promote self, do what you feel. So here's what we begin to do. We begin to say things like, well, you know what? I, I, be, I love Jesus, and Jesus is the Lord, but also, like, I've got to make it ahead in this life. And so I'm going to bow to Jesus, Lord, but I'm also going to bow towards self-promotion and, and financial gain. And again, inherently, these things aren't bad. I'm just saying we're making them the idol and saying I'm going to bow to these things. And, and then we say this, well, listen, and I, I'm, I'll be honest with you. I have, I have friends um, that I love dearly that are in same-sex relationships. And we begin to talk about we say, well, I'm going to follow Jesus, but like God is love, and love is love. So how could, when you love someone, how could God not want you to love that person or that thing? Or, or we say this, listen, it's just a little harmless fun on the side. My spouse, my husband, my wife, they'll never know. Or we say, listen, it, it, it is way easier. It's way easier not to get married because there's just these benefits and there's these things that it's just easier not to get married and we just live together and pretend like we're married and go through all the motions. It's just, it's easier. It's easier this way, Josh. So here's what we do. Jesus, I love you, but like, I also love these things. I love this person. I love this idea. And then we say, I don't think you understand how, how important politics are. I don't think you get it. This is going to, this is going to make, make or break us over the next four years. And so listen, I, 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 get, I get that Jesus, your Lord, you're in control of everything, but like the amount of time that I'm discipled by the news outlets compared to the amount of time that I'm discipled by Jesus, I've got this thing streaming all the time and I'm listening to it and absorbing everything. And so Jesus, I love you, but also like, Jesus, I'm going to press pause on my love for you and my lordship to you, and I'm just going to let this stuff consume me. I'm going to be led by this. Jesus, I know you can save, but we really need someone to step in to save us. Or we say, listen, my opinion is important, and I have a Facebook following that is so important to, this, to America. People listen to what I say. And so I don't care if it pushes them away from Jesus because this is my thoughts and my opinions and my feelings. And so even when I line this up, I, Jesus, I love you, but like people got to know the truth. And the best way to preach the truth is through, through social media and my comments. And so I'm going to let you be Lord of everything except for my Facebook post and my comment thread. I'm going to let you be Lord of everything. If we just look at these things, can I just tell you if this is the case, if you are more concerned with being right on Facebook or politically, if you care more about what your neighbor is, who your neighbor is going to vote for, you care more about that than you care about knowing whether they're going to hell or not, that's a problem. Jesus says that we care about people. Some of you get really fired up when I start talking about how God's word, we see God's word and um, same-sex relationships, gender, those things are sin living together outside of marriage is a sin. And you get fired up about these things and you start, yeah, 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 tell them. And you completely dismiss the fact that God tells us to love everybody. You're like, well, they can't be, yes, those two things can, can exist together. And so all of these things, what happens is this, here's the problem with all of this, is when you start doing this, when you start doing this, 
you start compromising, then you start living this thing where we say, if we only obey Jesus when it makes sense to us, then he's not Lord, he's our advisor. And obeying God when he makes sense to us is not obedience, it's just selfish and sinful agreements. And we spend the majority of our life thinking we are following Jesus and all along we're just trying to save the things in our life that God wants our allegiance to die to. So in your life right now, is there anything that you would not give up? What do you cherish most? And do those things align with God's way and his word? You see, there is a problem with this. If you sit back and start looking at what we begin to do when we follow Jesus in this way, it's just not possible. Like you physically cannot show allegiance, true allegiance to all of these things. This is why Jesus makes it so clear in saying, this is, if you choose to follow me, you gotta follow me fully in everything. I mean, here's just a couple of things that he says about this. He says, he continues to go on in that same passage in verse 25. He says, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world? Like literally, do you understand? When we do this, we are trying to gain the whole world and Jesus. I want Jesus and I want everything else as well. And what he says is, what, is it, what, is it, what good does it do to gain the whole world? Because you're gonna lose and forfeit yourself and your soul, and eternity. And, and then he, he there's, here's some other things. This is some hard stuff, but when we say Jesus is Lord, in Matthew chapter 7, he says this, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will. The one who does what I say. What Jesus is saying is there's, there's some of us that think that we're following Jesus. But when we say Lord, we don't really mean it because we're like, it's Jesus and. There's another passage. We're going to dig into this in a couple weeks. But in 1 John, here's what he says. He says, do not love the world or the things in this world. And in a culture, in a context where we, we believe that we hear all the time, love is love. Well, actually what Jesus says is there's actually a love that is sin. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life. So I think we have to make sure we understand that Jesus is not saying, don't love the people of this world. He's saying, don't love the darkness of this world that pushes against the kingdom of heaven. The desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. So why would a loving Father say, if you're going to choose to follow me, it's got to be me, all in, because he says all of these other things, at the end of this age, all of these other things are fading away. They're passing away. They won't last. And so what God says is God's not saying like, don't love these things because they're really good and I just wanna keep you from it. No, that's what, the, that's what the serpent said in the garden. God's when he says do not love, is he's saying this may look and feel good, but in the end you will perish. And I'm calling you away from it because I actually do love you. And in loving you, I want you to abide and remain in God so that you won't perish, but so that you'll live forever. Over and over and over again is God saying, you can't serve two masters. So, so what do we do? What do we do? I'm going to say what we do, and then I want to preface it with, I know this is not easy. We remove the banners. So God... If my preference isn't the most important thing and my preference is gonna push people away from Jesus, then how I share it and what I say to people is gonna be determined by what you want me to say and what your word tells me to say. And I know for some that's not easy. And you need to know this, for all of these things, this is a place where we're not just saying, drop the banner, get over it and be done. No, this is a place that you can wrestle, with, wrestle through these things. This is a place where we can have conversations, open God's word, and say, okay, let's figure this out together. But if, if Jesus is Lord, then politics, I'm, I'm gonna care about politics, but at the end of the day, I'm gonna remind my heart that I need to be discipled by Jesus and his word way more than I need to be discipled by political parties. And at the end of the day, who's gonna save this world is not a political party, his name is Jesus, and he is Lord, and I will serve and bow to that banner. Sexuality, this is, of all these, this is the, I know, this is the difficult one. And just because God's word says it, 
and I feel this, and I've got friends I have these conversations with. So I'm not saying this is, this is just easy, just get over it. But if God's word says that marriage is meant for a man and a woman, anything outside of that, pornography, lust, same-sex relationships, gender reassignment, God is saying, I know I created you, male and female. Any of those things, they're sin. And so, and if you're here and you're wrestling with that, whether you believe that or you're feeling that, I want to tell you, God loves you and we want to walk this with you. At the end of the day, like everything else in our life, if it doesn't line up with God's word, then we bow to it. We bow to the banner of the Lord. In my home, in my finances, in my job, and everything else that I use to make me feel good about myself, at the end of the day, if I'm neglecting what God has told me to do with all of those things that he's entrusted to me with, at the end of the day, if I'm neglecting this so that I can promote myself and get ahead in life, at the end of the day, then my response is that this will bow to the banner of the Lord. Here's what this is called, Just, it's called repentance. God, there is sin in my life and I'm gonna turn from that sin and I'm gonna chase after you. And for some, it's as easy as that. And others, it will take days, months, years. And I wanna tell you that we're here for the long haul. But what we don't wanna do is get to the place in our life and get to the end of our life and say, well, I knew Jesus as Savior, but I never knew him as Lord. There's a kingdom that lasts forever. And that king, his name is Jesus. And he says, if you're gonna follow me, it's all in.